Water bath canning is super simple and you don't even have to buy any special equipment to do it. The tools I'm gonna show you are ones that you probably can find in your kitchen. So let's jump into it. Have you walked through the store and seen the canning aisle and glanced at the thousands of gadgets that they sell for canning? I'm here to tell you, you hardly need any of those. I have canned for a while without investing in any special tools. The biggest thing that I would say please do not buy are those black spackleware canning pots. I have gone through three of those in 10 years. And the sad part of that story is that the metal is made very cheaply and it's mostly a gimmick for canners to invest in this big pot that they think will accommodate their canning journey and they're so excited, but they rust out in the bottom within three to five years, even if you take really good care of them. So instead I started canning in my sauce pot. Now you might not have a sauce pot as big as mine, but you don't need one this big. I'm just Italian, so all the sauce. However, you can can it in as small as a three quart pot or bigger than this pot, like a chowder pot, as long as you can cover your jars with water properly. So use what you have. This is a nice heavy bottom pot that I've invested in from a restaurant supply store. And this pot costs about $120, which I know is a huge investment. But trust me, those black canning pots cost about $35, and if they only last two to three years, you're gonna be spending that in the next 10 years. So skip that step and invest in a good quality pot or use what you've got. If you're just starting out to canning and you're unsure or don't have a lot of money to invest in things, there's really only two things that you need to buy. The first one is a canning funnel. Most people don't have these in their homes. However, I use this for more things than just canning, from straining cheese, to pouring herbs into a jar. This funnel is fantastic because it fits in most jars. This will help your cleanup at the end as it protects the countertops from splash. However, this is one of those things that isn't super necessary. So again, if you don't have a lot of extra money, you can skip the funnel too. The most important thing you need to start canning is of course canning jars. And I highly recommend investing in a brand name canning jar. Although it's tempting to buy the cheaper jars, those tend to break much more quickly. You wanna buy from a brand that has integrity like Ball or Mason or Kerr. And you want to buy brand new lids and rings if your jars do not come with them. You'll have to make sure that the jars, lids and rings are all sanitized, either using the oven method or hot water boiling them beforehand. Some people even use their dishwasher sanitized mode without soap. Some other gadgets you can invest in or you might have in your kitchen include this small mesh strainer, which is great for straining out bits of sauce or chunks in your jam that you don't want. A good oven mitt. I like these little silicone pinchers because they're easy to still use my hands with and quickly grab jars. This is a jar grabber. It's also not necessary. Obviously you can see I don't use it a lot since I just set it upside down. Um, it's not super necessary, but it is very helpful. It works like this. You can take the jars out of the pot. You can wait for the water to cool down and grab them out though as well, or I often use salad tongs. And the last thing you need is a butter knife. That just helps with debubbling the jars as you're filling them to make sure they're packed properly. Another great thing to have on hand is some vinegar. Whether you're using it in a pickling recipe or when I'm filling my water in the, in the canner for a water bath, I add a splash of vinegar to demineralize the water because we have well water, which is hard. And if you don't add vinegar to the water, it just adds a film to your jars to make them look dusty. There's lots of recipes available on the internet. So buying recipe books isn't necessary. However, they're great to have on hand when you're looking up quick recipes. If you want one to start with, I recommend the Ball Home Preserve, Complete Book of Home Preserving. This has been published probably over a hundred times. And so there's lots of different additions to it. They always recommend buying the most recent edition that you can find so that the science is most up to date. We'll have links for all these products in the description below. So let's talk about some things that I love to can. The first one is pickled. Here I have these pickled beets. Pickles don't necessarily have to be cucumbers. You can pickle things like carrots, onions, my favorite, or these beets here. I love to put these on a fresh salad all winter long and enjoy my the bounty of my garden. These pickled beets were pickled with some allspice and cardamom for some extra zip. If you're missing the summertime or you have the winter blues in February, I highly recommend canning strawberries when they're in season. When you open this jar, it smells like summer. It's the happiest scent that could ever fill your kitchen. It's super simple to do. You just put the strawberries in the jar and pour a simple syrup using maple syrup and water over the strawberries. 
You can also find a recipe using honey or sugar. The last thing and my middle son's favorite is canning jelly. This is a quick and easy strawberry jelly that we use some pectin and light honey. So now that we've talked about water bath canning, let's step it up and talk about pressure canning. If you're interested in finding out more information, check out our video below.